I spent a thousand dollars on a meta deck. Oh, what have I done? What's up guys? We're back with another epic video. Yeah, I did it. I spent a thousand dollars on a meta blue eyes, white dragon deck. And as you guys know, if you play meta blue eyes, isn't the best deck ever, but naturally, since I'm an old school person, I like the old stuff. You got to go with blue eyes, right? Dark magician, blue eyes, something like that. And I figured that would be my entrance into meta. So I saw Team Samurai's video a few weeks ago. He made a Blue Eyes deck and I said, I kind of like this deck. I play Blue Eyes on Duel Links. I know what most of these cards do, so I don't have to figure out too much. So it should be a good starting place. So uh, I kind of dug myself a hole. I'll buy the cheap stuff. I'll just buy all the commons, the rares. I don't need anything expensive. It was a deep, dark hole, guys. So I'm going to show you guys some stuff that I have that came in. I kept, we're going to kind of review the conditions. I bought everything on TCG Player, actually. So I don't buy a lot on TCG Player. I sell on TCG Player, but I don't buy much. So we're going to see what do the conditions look like. You know, is Near Mint and Near Mint the same as I would sell Near Mint? Is it better? Is it worse? I'm sure there's going to be a variance because I bought from tons of different sellers. So I think it should be pretty fun to check out in this video. We're mostly just going to be rating TCG Player, to be honest. It's going to be interesting. We do have a giveaway for this video. It's actually a pretty nice one. This is a pretty nice, obnoxious Celtic Guardian secret rare from the 2004-10. All you got to do, like this video, be subscribed. Let me know your experiences with TCG Player. Do you buy on TCG Player? Do you not? Do you hate them? Do you think they're really awesome? Do you have certain sellers you like, certain you don't? Whatever. Let me know in the comments and let's get into the conditions and all the uh, the cards that we bought. This is going to be in a weird order because I've recorded this. Sometimes I recorded with a face cam. Sometimes I didn't. Sometimes I just recorded just for a second. All the ones in this recording, I have like seven packages. We have several others. So it's going to be going back and forth. I don't know when I'm going to put everything in. I'll probably do this part after the ones I've already recorded. And so, yeah, just just bear with me. It should be should still be cool. This video is brought to you by Otis. You might be asking, what is Otis? Otis is a stock market for culture. Otis is an alternative investment app that allows you to buy shares of epic items like graded cards or video games. Basically, it gives you a chance to buy items that are just way too expensive to justify buying all at once. But you can buy a small share of it and you can be a partial owner. And some of them include a Jim Mint BGS 9.5 first edition blue eyes from Legend of Blue Eyes. Yeah, that's a good one. Rare video games like a WADA 9.6 graded Pokemon Red version. Who doesn't remember Red version from back in the day? And they even have epic sports cards like a PSA 10 World Cup Lionel Messi card. If you're interested in being a partial owner of these awesome items for just a small cost compared to the total value, check out Otis. Sign up for Otis and get your first share free when you fund your account. Thanks again to Otis for sponsoring the video, and let's get to it. We don't have the whole setup set up. I want to open this, so I'm going to open this up for some of the cards we bought for the Blue Eyes deck. Let's see if everything is good in here. Let's open it up. Let's check it out. All right, so they're all in one top loader. That's a little scary. Okay. As you can see, we've got some strikes, some solemn strikes. Very cool. Oh, I like that. That's really cool. Okay. Three strikes. Secret Rare First Edition from Bosch. That's from uh, Breakers of Shadow. Let's see how what, what Near Mint means. Let's see if they're pretty nice. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, Back's definitely got some play on it, but, you know. I would probably not call this Near Mint, I mean, honestly. Let's see. I mean, yeah, I mean it's got some play on it. Let's check the others. Okay, let's see. This for me, like personally on TCG Player, this would be a light play at least. I mean, look at that. That's got a ding on it. I mean, eesh. so yeah. Probably not gonna like return them or anything, but definitely like for me, I would I would not go near mint on these. I mean, just yeah. I mean, it's definitely more more on the yeah. I mean, these are definitely light play for sure. Oh wait, what does that have a crease in it? Okay, maybe we do need to return these. Yeah, I mean, you can't have a crease in it. it okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's not near mint. That one's that one's definitely not. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to. I mean, we might have to return these, honestly. That that last one. I wasn't going to. The last one really. It kind of changed my mind there. That is pretty rough. Uh, this one's actually not bad. I mean, it's not terrible. I would definitely still call it light play, but this one's not that bad. Got definitely some scuffs on it. The top has a ding on it. I mean, it's not near mid, but it's the best one. That last one is the worst, though. So, okay. Kind of disappointing. 
All right, let's see what's in these things. I'm not really sure, to be honest. So let's just open it up. Let's see what is inside of here. Is it, what is it? Oh, that's what this is. Oh, he sent me an, a DR-04 Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman. Mad Men. All right, we got the Nebula Dragon. Cool, that's for the deck. Very nice. It's from Trevor. All right, we have a bubble mailer. I really don't know what this is. I do not know what this is. Is that it? Oh, that's what this is. This is the hard earth dragon. Wait, let's take this thing out of here. We got the hard earth dragon. We got this for the blue eyes deck, the extra deck. But not only that, we got one for the Ghost Binder as well. So, double whammy. Let's get this thing out of here. Good old tape. Team bags. Prefer team bags. Oh, yeah. This is exciting. Bought a Ghost in a while. This thing was not cheap, too. First edition. <laughs> ghost Rare. All right. Let's see what it looks like. It's supposed to be near mint, guys. It's supposed to be near mint. Please be near mint. All right, from what I can tell so far, I mean, there's a scratch on it, but I mean, that's just, that's ghost rares for you. Let's check out the rest of it. Hopefully the back looks pretty good. So the foil has some crap on it, but I mean, it's a ghost rare. I'm not expecting the foil to be perfect. It honestly is not bad. It does, wait, maybe that scratch was on the, something else because I don't even see it. It's got a few like little, you know, little scratches and dings on it. Check the back. I mean, this card looks pretty good. I'm actually really happy with this. Let's check the... Oh, it does have a little bit of a, you guys see that? Has a little bit of a slight indention, but honestly, for near for a TCG player near mint, uh, this is pretty good. I mean, that's that's about what you can uh, hope for. Okay, a ghost rare. That is pretty exciting, guys. I'll probably put this in a video. I'm talking about, uh, you know, opening some stuff up. This is definitely better than the Solemn Strikes. That's for sure. That's a pretty card, guys. I like that. That is awesome. All right, we got a couple more packages. Let's go ahead and open these up and uh, let's see what we got. This is from the one and only Simply Unlucky. Simply, simply unlucky. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see what the conditions are like over on the SU store. So far, we've been pretty hit or miss with this TCG stuff. So we'll see uh, how it lives up to. Okay, we've got the we've got the cards. I don't even remember which cards it was. I'm pretty sure it's like an Xyz or something like that. I can't remember, but let's see. Okay, we've got uh, oh the hope. Harbinger Dragon, number 38. Card is pretty good. If I can get this, it's team backs. I'm a big fan of team backs, so good. All right, they are uh, two into one top loader. Okay, only one sleeve. This is what I prefer to do. I like to do two penny sleeves and but in one top loader. I like to do two in one top loader because it keeps them from moving around too much, which I do like. Um, I prefer to use two penny sleeves though, but let's check this out. This is a Saiho promo. Wow, I didn't know that. This card's actually worth like, I think I paid like seven bucks for it or something for both of them. Well, each, seven dollars each. Okay, that one looks pretty good. Very good for near mint. Very nice. And then we have another one and the conditions look really, really good. I'm happy with this first one. SU shop, SU game shop. That's a, that's a plus right there. First package looks good of this day. Because <laughs> you guys are going to see this all at once, but this is a new day. Next up, we have one from ARG. So let's see what uh, let's see what ARG is looking like. I bought several things from ARG over the, over the months and years. Not really too many years, but months, you know. Not usually uh, singles, though. So we're going to see what this looks like. Okay, we have, oh, Return of the Dragon Lords for the blue eyes. All right, we got to get a little crazy here. Whenever you do this with a tape, if you want to use the knife, you want to put it inside the top loader, but you want to pull it out away from the card like this, like that. You see that? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but also if you're not thinking, you might be like, yeah, let me get my card and just chop your card in half. You don't want to do that. You want to go out. All right, let's check these two. I think they pulled the same one penny sleeve strategy, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I understand uh, why you do it. Sometimes I do it if I have too many cards, you know what I mean? So the Return of the Dragon Lords is looking pretty good. There's a little bit of dimples there, which is not great to see. Um, I would say, yeah, the dimples on the back, but there's a little bit of play wear on it. Actually, I can wipe that off. Yeah, so there's a little bit of stuff, but honestly, it's not too bad. And it's only like a $12 card, so we're not like really too concerned. Um, still pretty expensive, though, 
for just a legendary collection Kaiba card. Um, but overall, these look... Wait, is that a corner issue? Um, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. It's I think these were cleaner, but those are also just promos, and these are actually like secret rares, so... Sometimes they're in different sets, so it varies from the condition to condition, but overall pretty happy with that one. Okay, final package of this day. You guys are going to see like tons of packages, but final package of this day. This is the big one. This is the one I'm worried about. So let's see. Imperms. Infinite Impermanence. This one's scary because I bought a play set of these. I only needed I only needed two, and I was like, you know what? Let's just buy the play set while we're at it. So let's let's be really careful here because this is a Flame of Destru Flames of Destruction play set. All right, really slowly go through here. Three first edition secret rares. The top rarity of infinite impermanence until they make that ultimate rare, which they probably will soon. Um, I hope these are in a sleeve. Okay, they are. It looks like they went with a single penny sleeve, one top loader on three imperms. That's a little scary. Please be in good condition. First copy. Okay, the front is looking very good. The back's really what's going to tell the tale, though. Whoa. Guys, oh, there, oh, no, what is that? What is that? Oh, it was looking so good. The back was super clean. Let's see if we can do anything there. Oh, there's a bunch of junk on there. Man, it was looking good until that. Okay, there's a lot of junk on the top, which is really weird. You guys see this? A lot of junk on the top. I don't really like that. Hopefully, this is the only one like that. The rest looks so good, though. If that was not there, that would have been really good condition. Okay, let's talk about the front. All right, the front's got stuff on it too. Okay, wait. It's the top edges. I don't know. Is that like a, is that like a print thing? The top has that stuff too. Is that like a thing? A thing? If you guys have imperms, do you have this on your imperms, or is this just like somehow they've done this to their cards? I don't know. This one's definitely better. Like, like you guys see those little speckles at the top? You don't love to see that. You don't love to see that. Um. The front edge, yeah, it's that top edge. It's not not fantastic. Okay, let's see what the last one. But that, that second one was definitely better than the first one. Front on this one looks pretty good, I would say. There's a little little spot right there. We're, we're getting really crazy here, but... All right, there's some more of the speckles. Maybe it's a... Is that a Flames of Destruction kind of thing to have that on there? I don't think it is. Like, that would be weird. But this one is not too bad, I would say. Okay, there's a little bit of stuff on it. I feel like that could, like, come off. But you guys see that? I don't know. It's on all of them, though. They're not bad. They're definitely better than the strikes. The solemn strikes were a lot worse. I would say these, um, this one was the worst, I would say. They're all pretty close to near mint. They're all really good other than the top part. I don't know what the deal with that is. But honestly, for TCG player, it's probably not too bad, actually. So, I'm not super upset. I think we actually did pretty good on these three packages, um, in terms of conditions. I don't think I'm going to be like returning anything or anything like that. I just try to avoid returns because it's just really frustrating as a seller. But as a seller, you also have to, you know, accurately describe your cards. You know what I mean? So if it's close, then I usually give them the benefit of the doubt. Like this, I can see how they called these near mint. I understand how they did it. Let me know what your opinions are on the conditions in the comments. But overall, I think we've actually done really well buying on TCG players so far. We've had the solemn strikes were the worst, I think, so far. But other than that, everything else has been at least close. So pretty good. Okay, first package of today. I'm going to say that in, there's multiple days involved here, but uh, that makes it kind of cool, actually, I think. So we're going to open this up. Let's see what we have here from an unknown seller. I don't even know what we bought, to be honest, on some of these. Okay, first of all, this top loader is a little bent, which is a little scary if you guys can't see that. Uh, hopefully it didn't damage the card. This was a tracked card, so it probably means it's a bigger card because on TCG player, this should be somewhat useful to some of you guys. You don't have to track anything unless it's fifty dollars, um, but you're recommended at twenty or more to track. But tw at twenty, it's kind of expensive, so a lot of people only do it at thirty. I usually track twenty and above, just to be safe and you know say that I can like, keep people happy. And you know, it's always nice to get a tracking number over not. So let's see what this is. I'm sure it was something that needed tracking because it was tracked. So we're gonna be get a little crazy with the knife here today because. The tape is not my favorite strategy. It's better than no tape, though. So I will say that I like the team bag better. So you got to be really careful with the knife when you use that. We got it out nice and safely. As long as you point it away from the card, you should be fine. Okay, it looks like the card didn't get too bent or anything. It looks like a newer card. 
Ooh, the number 90 Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. So this one came in Battles of Legend Relentless Revenge, which is only like two or three years old at this point, maybe 2018, I think, maybe. And I think Light's Revenge is 2017. Am I right about that? Armageddon was 2020. Okay, maybe I'm a year off. I can't remember. Uh, let me know if I'm forgetting one of those. But this is really, really nice. This card's actually pretty good. It's a nice extra deck card, so that's a good addition. We're going to put it into Penny Sleeve real quick, then we'll throw it into the actual deck sleeves when we're done. Let's go to the next thing. A lot of these are not tracks, so these are going to be the cheaper cards, you know, under $20 cards, or the order was under $20 at least. And a lot of these people, I bought like a single card. So if it was like an $8 card, you're not going to track it because it would be $4. That'd be half your cost. It'd be way too much, you know. Okay, let's not put all the info on there. Okay, so on, right here we have Pot of Desires. I accidentally bought multiple Pot of Desires. I meant to buy, not buy the rares, and I did buy the rares by accident. And then I bought these Ultra Rares. So I bought three Ultra Rares from the uh, Collector's 10, I believe 2017. It's very confusing because they put CT14, and that means it's 2017. Very weird. I don't know why they did that. So the back of this one looks really good. Pot of Desires is a pretty good card, but whenever I use it, I always banish the cards that I actually need. So I'm sure you guys can relate with that if you've ever played with this card. Because <laughs> you go to your search your deck and all of a sudden all your cards are banished under the 10 cards that you banished under Pot of Desires. It's kind of funny. It's very risky, but it looks like these cards are very minty. So I don't have any complaints about that one. Definitely a great transaction there. And by the way, if you guys are interested in more like sort of like mail like this, where I just kind of look at what I bought, see what, you know, the conditions are, what, what we got right. This is the stuff I used to do back in like 2019 and I haven't done in a while, but I thought it'd be interesting because we're entering into the meta deck, like which... I never thought would actually happen, so it's kind of funny. We've got trade-ins. Okay, so here's the issue here. Here is why you want to use the tape. Card savers, I always prefer top loaders over card savers, but I occasionally will run out of top loaders because they're really hard to find, and you have to use card savers, so it's totally fine to do those. But if you do use them, you got to be a little careful because they can slide out, and I don't usually like using tape on them either. Um, they usually don't slide up, so... I wouldn't really blame the seller for this bit of a you know issue here, but you got to be careful. In top loaders, you're, it's much more likely for the card to slide out because it just kind of jiggles around unless you have multiple cards in there. So it looks like the card is going to be fine. We'll see. It's a secret rare version because right now I have um, co either commons or rares. I can't remember. The card looks to be pretty good. It's not. It looks like maybe it's a little scuffing, but it's definitely nothing to complain about. So that's pretty good. So far, so good on today's mail. Let's go to the next one. This one feels a little thicker. Maybe we got multiple cards in this one. Okay. Also, um, I want to mention Effect Veiler is one that I have not uh, bought. I have a couple commons. And I want to know, should I upgrade to Ultimate Rare or Starlight? Let's say I go big time and I get the big boys. Okay, this is taped on. Let's be careful here. Yeah, if I do go big, should I go Ultimate or Starlight? I know most of you guys, I think most of you guys would pick Ultimate Rare. I do like Starlight as well, though. I think Ultimate Rare is actually cheaper, though. So it might actually be a better idea to go for the Ultimate Rares because they're like the same in amount of coolness, maybe even better in some a lot of y'all's some a lot of y'all's opinion. Um, there's another trade-in. Oh, I don't like when they do this, though. Um, but yeah, let me know about the Effect Veilers and stuff like that. If you do have one, you know, if you have Ultimate Rare Effect Veiler or Starlight Effect Veiler, hit me up. I don't like when people tape to the thing. With only one, it's not too bad, but when it's on both sides, it's kind of difficult to get the card out like without damaging it. So this is okay because it's just one and you can pull it off. But yeah, it's always a little bit weird. The more tape you use, I feel like the more dangerous it gets for the card. So you always got to be really careful using tape because it can really ruin a card. Like if it gets stuck to it or if you accidentally bend the card trying to get the tape off, you know, all this crazy stuff. So this looks to be a pretty good condition. Maybe a little bit of scuffing right there, but not anything I'm too worked up about. It's like a $6 card. So as long as it's close to near mint, that is cool with me. All right, we've got two more tracked orders, and I think that's going to be it for everything. I think I have a couple more things. I did buy Ghost Bells because right now I have a Ghost Bell from... It's either Dude or... I think it's Dude, and then it's the... Is it the Ultron Art? And then I have one OCG one. So I bought some Max Rarity ones, some First Edition Flood ones. So those will be here eventually. I And maybe one other thing. Oh, yeah. My Black Rose Moonlight is foreign, so I bought an English copy. So... Um, let's see. This should be everything besides that, though. Let's see what it is. I think this is the one where the tracking didn't update for some reason for, like, six days. But they actually sent it. So, oh, this isn't it. Never mind. This is, the, that's the last one, I guess. This is the Halka Fibrax, which, by the way, I once owned about 20 copies of this. And then I sold all of them because, you know, I don't care about meta. I'm not going to play meta. 
And now I find myself buying them back for even more. I think I sold mine around 25 to 30. When Dupo, is it Dupo? No, what is it? Dual Overload. When Dual Overload actually came out, we opened like, Chelsea and I opened like five cases. And I sold them all between 25 and 30. This one was like 35, I think, after everything. So uh, we did get this. Um, but, it, you know, we lost a little bit of money over time, but that's okay. And the card looks to be in very good condition. So this is a, a pretty good card in general, just on a lot of decks. So it fits pretty well with this deck because there's a lot of tuners in it. You can special summon it and all that stuff, but happy with that one. Final package, I think, of the video. So this has two pretty cool cards. Two cards that are really good in the deck. So let's open it up. And usually when the cards are really good, they're from the extra deck. Just a spoiler there. I found that out um, for meta. It's extra deck stuff. <laughs> you know, your extra deck's really good. Okay, I think it's two I think it's two cards in here. Okay, we've got another piece of tape. Let's see what it is. Alright, if you guys want me to do an in-depth analysis of the deck one day, then we can. But I know this is primarily not what we do on the channel, but I figured this part would be interesting. Buy the more of the buying part, checking out the conditions. A lot of you guys do that all the time. So we have is this two cards in here? In one sleeve? I don't know how I feel about that, but the number 97, Dragoobleon. I think that's how you say that. It's actually insane though. It can't be targeted with card effects. 3,000, 3,000. I mean, he's a blue eyes on both attack and defense. Insane. Well, blue eyes attack, at least. And then the Celine. Another one from Dual Overload that I sold all my copies for like five bucks, and now she's $20. So, um, quite interesting, but a pretty good card. And then this card is absolutely insane. I mean, it just whips out some fire. This one's from Battles of Legend, Legend Heroes Revenge. There it is, Heroes Revenge. I was right. Heroes was after Relentless. That was probably 2019. And then 2020 was Armageddon. So yeah, I think I nailed it there. That's pretty cool. So both these cards will be going in the deck. Maybe I'll run through the deck real quick so you guys can see, you know, what rarities I have right now. Hopefully we can upgrade it to be even better soon. All right, so we're still missing a few cards after I checked. I think we have 37 of the main deck. So just here's the rarities we have going right now. So we've got... This is the blue eyes I have right now. Guys, should we get like DDS or should we get like SDK first? Or what should we get for the blue eyes? Because that's like, you know, the main flex of the deck. You get to have three uh, three blue eyes, which is awesome. Nebula Dragons, I think they only come in rare. So we're doing good there. I sold my ultimate rare literally right before I made this deck. So I'm very angry about that. Um, I really need first edition of this. White Stones are still not here. We're waiting on those. I never pulled any. You guys saw the live. It was insane. Um, I upgraded this to Secret Rare. Didn't get it. Um, I didn't, I'm just going to stick with these for now, probably, unless it gives you guys OCD, maybe, you know, we'll get secret rares. I think, I don't know. It's fine. Fake builders I mentioned earlier. So maybe ultimate rare starlight, who knows? All right. Then we have, uh, we're upgraded these. I bought three of them just to replace that really only using two. So I only have these two right now. We pulled these in the, uh, in the live. So pretty cool. Then I have, uh, an OCG. This is actually from a 1999 monster reborn. I thought it was really cool because I didn't have a first dead LOB or something. So I don't know. I might leave that in there. It's just a regular common, but it's pretty old. So it's pretty awesome. I upgraded to a secret rare one of these still waiting on it trade in. I think I got a third one. So we're waiting on that one. Um, I definitely got Mel two more melodies. They're not here yet as well. I only played two of these, but I bought three, I guess for, just for the heck of it. Uh, two returns. Okay, cool. Skill drain is the lost art. Probably the best one, unless you can go first dark crisis, but that's just a regular rare. I bought three imperms, only two for the deck and then solemn strikes. You guys saw in the video, even though they were a little beat up, but I, I just kept them in. So that's what we got for our main deck rarities. Let me know if you got, if I should upgrade any of those. Let me know what you guys think about that. For the extra deck, I have every card except access code talker because it's $120 right now. I'm going to wait for the Mega Tens. Hopefully they'll reprint it. And then I can either buy the original for cheaper or the reprinted version. We will get when we open the tens because I'm going to be opening a ton of tens. I'm sure I'll get a lot of copies of it. So we have the Hulk we saw. Yeah, so the access code would be in here. Uh, Celine, the Hieratic. Link Karibo is only a common, so we can maybe upgrade him. Is, is he going ultimate? No, I don't think he does. Just ultra rare, right? Spirit Dragons we pulled in the live. That was cool. Azure Eyes. Um, this is the one that I got the uh, jump version, I think. So pretty cool. We just You just saw these guys. Uh, I think these are all high rarity. We got the Ghost Rare. I mean, that's a, that's just cool. I mean, it's just a flex for the extra deck. And this is the uh, just taking up access code spot. So it's just in there for now. So uh, let me know what you guys thought about um, just this video in general. Do you like this, you know, a little bit different format? We buy some singles, talk about you know, a deck I'm making or something like that. I know a lot of you guys are just here for openings and stuff, but uh, maybe this could, you know, change up the pace a little bit since we do post seven videos a week. So, you know, every once in a while, maybe you do something different than an opening. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys are playing in the meta. What are you using? Do you guys have any fun decks like this, like Blue Eyes? I'm sure a lot of you guys have some cool stuff. 
And what do you think about maxing out your, you know, fun deck? Even if it's not a great deck, do you think it's cool? Do you think it's a waste of money? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this one, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this different video. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Dark Shining Abyss. Ooh, the Revival Jam. Oh, and oh!